Together and we ended up with a, a nice, stable, very solid, everything square, very functional chair, which is going to be one of six. Got the clamps all off, the glue's dried up. At this point is where we would normally do our hand sanding. And the, those uh, rubber or plastic pads on the clamps, they always leave a mark like that. Uh, like they, they give up some of their, their uh, grease or something. That's got to be sanded off. Any touch-up sanding, just make it as finish ready as possible. And we're going to talk about finishing a little later. What we're going to do next is build the seat or the cushion for this. This starts with a piece of half-inch plywood. And uh, always look at the plywood after it's cut to see if there's any kind of a warp in it. This one's pretty flat. Sometimes there's just a little curve. And you can either put that up, and then when you sit in it, it'll flatten it out, or you can put it down and kind of have a built-in little um, bend for your seat. So this is uh, 16 by 17, I believe we cut this. So recall last time we put these little angle stays in here, and that's how we're going to attach this to the chair. So I'm going to set this on the chair and center it the best I can and kind of eyeball it. Back here, where, this, where the seat is going to set up against this reveal, I'm going to leave just about maybe 3 16 of an inch to give enough room for the fabric to fit in there. So last week, we talked about this a little bit of a splay I put on the seat for the chairs that I made. This is a square chair. You can make this square. It really isn't going to make any difference at all. But if you splay it a little bit, just like we did with these cuts here, we, remember we angle those down, and then it gives you the illusion that the chair is splayed out. And this will give you kind of an illusion <coughs> that the seat is made that way too. So it's strictly an aesthetic consideration. So what I'm going to do first, make sure I got this where I want it, and make sure it's not going to move. I could temporarily clamp this if I wanted to. I think I can hold it with my hand. I'm going to put this, put a pencil through the holes in those four corner pieces and mark out where we need to locate those. So let's make sure that those marks came through. Got them, one, two, three, four? Yep. Okay, so what we should do is let's do that part first, get the hardware in, then we can screw it in place, and that way we know exactly where it is before we mark it out for the rest of the cuts. So what we're gonna do is drill a 16th inch pilot hole all the way through all four of those marks. And that's step one. <laughs> And since Rob has safety glasses, he gets to do this kind of work. Safety first. Lighting this up with my left hand is a little awkward. Okay, so 
that the pencil marks were on that side, right? Yes. Okay, so we'll, we'll do right. the uh, team nuts from this side. So, so the next step, we're going to switch to a three-quarter inch Forstner bit. I don't know how well you can see that, but everybody knows what a T-nut is, right? So this is a quarter 20 T-nut. The flange on that is three-quarter. So we're just going to drill maybe um, a sixteenth or a little bit deeper in order to uh, have a little counter board to set that flange in. Can you hit the on switch there? Satisfied with all that? Yeah, that'll work. Okay. So just a little three-quarter inch counter bore, and that fits perfectly, the little flange. We're going to put a 5 16th inch brad point bit and go all the way through. That um, part where the nut goes in is a l about a quarter of an inch, so we'll drill a little bit bigger of a hole so we have enough space for a little freedom there. There from there. That's the extent of my skills for the day. <laughs> line up perfectly. Do we have something to tap you, you with? you want to do your, cut your angles on first? Uh, Before you put the T-nut. Actually, I want, to, I want to screw it in place so it's okay, there real tight fine. and mark it out. I had four choices and I got it on the fourth one. So just like uh, dry fitting before you glue, this isn't a bad idea just to make sure everything lines up like it should. I'm sorry? <coughs> well, right now about a quarter inch, but when we get the seating material wrapped around the chair, it's going to be um, hardly any at all. And we might actually have to do a little forcing to even make sure that the screws are long enough. I want to secure it and then scribe it so it's not, it'll just keep it from sliding around while we're marking it. And it's really no big deal. This is probably just being a little overly cautious with it. All right, so the front is where we need it. I'm just going to make a line where these guys are. And it's, uh, it's not quite flush. I've got a little bit of the ends of the legs, maybe an eighth inch sticking over, but we're going to have seating material wrapped around this. So it's going to end up bigger than what it is here. So anybody got any upholstery, any upholstery experience? And usually my wife does this for me because she's got considerable more experience than I do. Now we could cut that right where we marked it, but we're going to put that little bit of a 
fake splay on here, so I'm just going to kind of eyeball where that might be. We got a straight edge to mark with. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I'm also going to mark to make sure I know which go which goes to the front. So where are you marking to and from for your for making this play? What are you using on the back and, and as a reference to how, how to, to, to know it. how much you're making that just, angle? Just eyeballed it. So um, when it was, I turned it over and just kind of um, looked to see where it was. But I'm going to put it back where it came from and look at those lines from underneath. So we're just going to bandsaw that to make that angle for the next step. Are you going to do that? Yeah, I'll do it. Since you got glasses. Okay. So, so that's that's the line right there. Okay, the inside line. Yep, inside okay. line. I'm hoping the Tina to affect this inside cut. You catch a little. See what we did there? And then finally, we're going to go to the router table and we're going to round both of these edges off. On the top, the purpose is, well the purpose of both of them is so when the fabric wraps around there, it's not on that sharp corner, which would show and, and could also cut the fabric. And when you're sitting in the chair, you don't want to have a, a sharp corner because you'll feel that right through the fabric as well. T nuts, yeah, Larry. Is that angle unique to each chair? If you remember last week, we were talking about if you had everything dead nuts perfect, all the pieces should always be interchangeable, like it, like when it's coming out of a factory, because we're making it by hand. There's going to be subtle differences in each piece. At least that's my experience. Do you want to compare this with one we did yesterday or last week, and see how close we were? of these two matching. If we were making six chairs, we might be able to use that one on another chair. If we were use the same chair to set these up. Yeah, we made it wider, that's all. Yeah, just, just a little bit different. Yeah. So we made this to the same chair, but yes. we were all dry fit mm -hmm. when we did it, right? We had yeah. those things double stuck taped in there. So generally, I'm going to make, I'm going to put a number on these and a number on the chair so I know which one goes with which. All right, now the fun part. 
we got some chair foam here we're going to start with. This is two inch foam. Where'd this come from? Hobby Lobby? Is that right? So I've never used this stuff before. I usually use actual foam rubber. And that was from Joanne's or Michael's, wasn't it? Oh, okay. And in foam rubber, you can buy, I think Joanne's is the only place that I know of anyway that even has that anymore. And I'm going to cut this just to the size of this, maybe um, an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch bigger. Yeah, I, got, I got a brand new pair of fabric scissors here. This is one of my stocking stuffers this year for my wife. <laughs> She's very practical, that one. All right, so that's reasonably close to what we want. And on top of foam rubber goes batting. And, and this is much more like batting than it is foam rubber. The batting protects the foam and it also just gives some feel to the chair underneath. And another purpose for the batting is, is with foam. When you pull the fabric over it, these are going to round over. and. Um, the batting kind of helps with that process. So the batting, I want to go just to the edge of the seat pan. So cut that about like that. So there's enough batting here to, to wrap around. And then the next step is going to be the fabric itself. Where is it? Oh, and we chose, um, I, just, I just raided my, my wife's collection. She's got a, a whole closet full of bolts of material. And this was left over from some recliners that she redid for us several years ago. And it, it's basically man-made leather. I don't know what the brand is. It might be Naugahyde. should have plenty here for your five other chairs. So we're going to put all this together. We got plenty of fabric here. So I like to start with the back, probably no particular reason. I just like to do it that way. And of course you want to keep your staples outside of the nuts. I'm not going to be real particular about stretching this first cut, but keep in mind that this has to stretch in four directions, so I do want to get some stretch on it this way as I'm putting this on. And then when we get this on, we're going to come back and put some more staples in it. go to the opposite side and this is where I'm going to start stretching. Let me hold that or you got it? I'll tell you what, why don't I pull a new stable? You can see where the edge is right there. Come on in maybe, maybe half inch, half inch in. That's more than a half. close to the corner. Let's get a little closer to the corner. Okay. 
So there's the beginnings of our cushion. Now the harder part is how are we going to handle these corners. So just a, a standard tuck corner. And, and you know something we didn't do with this chair is round, round the corners over. Shouldn't. Yeah. But with all that batting, it's probably not going to make a real big difference. And this stuff starts to bunch up. And you got to consider this is going to be sitting on that chair invisible. So you just want to take your time playing with this and try to get this as neat looking as you can with as few wrinkles as you can. Rob, these are your chairs. So you tell me when you think this is reasonable. Looks good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, well, are fine, right? yep. Sure. This, all right. So, sides. So get the sides started. Just get them started, huh? Yeah. And then we'll go to the corners. And then we'll go to the corners. I right. see why I'm going to get there. Oh, oh. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. yeah, make sure you're staying outside the T nuts there. The same thing over here, right? Same thing over here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. No. okay, so reasonable? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. No. What we do for the corners is you kind of bring them in together this way. And then you can flatten yeah, them a little bit. Yeah. Where do you want it? No, just anywhere along in there. To... Cool. Tell you what, we might we might cut that little tail of that stuff off there. Yeah, that, yeah, get that little cut that off. The fat, the underlying the batting, batting and stuff. Okay. You do want that batting to come around that corner, though. Yeah, I guess you do. Yeah. Maybe you want to get even a closer staple in there now? Yeah, I think that's probably good. Right there. Put your finger. All set? Yep. Yeah. Done. for that, but I'll try this. Pretty, you know, once you get that set down on. Yep, that's a good looking corner. It's going to give you a pretty good corner. Yep. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? When you get done, you got five more you're going to have to do now. Well, maybe you better get in here and do this practice, Rob. If you get a little bunching underneath, is okay, but you want to keep as much of it from showing as you can. Looks like my mother-in-law's chin. Can <laughs> <laughs> she, we go on YouTube? You know, this is on YouTube. Yeah, this is going to be this is taped. Be careful. Get another one over here. This is good. Good thing. I'll staple you tuck. Do you want one in there now? So you're doing this side first, right? Yeah, but you got you got also pull it. You got to pull it this way, as well as this way. Do we want do we want a staple in there right now? I think you, you want to you, know, you want to staple an inch and a half or so from the corner. Ready? Edges so that they, you know. Not used to using manual tools, you don't have to plug in or have air on. Yeah, what's the deal with that? 
Yeah. Okay. Right. So we need Yep. Reasonably. So we, got, we look around, see where we need a couple more staples here on the bottom. Now that we got our corners done, mm -hmm. so that could use one here. Could use one here. Okay, that's that looks halfway decent. All right, so now we're just going to get rid of a lot of this excess material here, and um, take it a little bit at a time, and, and keep trimming back. I don't want to cut in the wrong places. So I want to expose all these T-nut holes, and because this is going to be sitting down on the chair, I want to get as much of this out of the way as I can. By the time we get done with this, I'll have a place to sit, so anybody comes to visit, you're going to have to you know, use one of my old chairs. So let's do a, a little dry fit here. Can I do it on the table here? Yep. Let's see, what, see, what we, see what we got. Once you know the, he got done with the first try and the table and it doesn't rock, it was perfect. I've never done that before. <laughs> so when we, when we screw this down, just by pressing it down, you can kind of see if it's going to or not. But if you look right, right here, see if that makes a difference to you, Rob. If we come around here, once we screw that down, you see that gap right there? Going to be an issue? I think it's going to tighten down and we not see it. Well, let's just take a look and see. It looks like that length is going to work great. All right, so you get to give it the first butt test. Butt test. <sighs> Crash. <laughs> Pretty cool. <laughs> Okay, so that's that's a basic, inexpensive, reasonably easy to make chair, and then you can put a finish on it, whatever you want to finish it with. So cushion comes off, do all of your hand sanding, clean up all the clamp marks, get that just as neat and clean and as smooth as you want. Uh, I generally will sand this by hand, and I'll use 120 grit paper. And I've found, you know, I don't even buy sheets of sandpaper anymore. I haven't bought them in years. I buy the sticky rolls and use that for a lot of things. But for hand sanding, I'll just cut a piece off and fold it in half. And it lasts forever. Uh, a sheet's going to start tearing where you bend it and what have you. Just that sticky bag is great for hand sanding. So once you get it how you want it, you're satisfied with your sanding. If you're grain raisers, go ahead and raise the grain if you want. I generally don't do that. And then you finish a choice. What, what, what are you going to finish it with? Probably lacquer. Spray it on. And then go to your spray area, wherever that may be, and spray your lacquer. I'm sorry? Out yeah, out in the driveway. <laughs> it, you know, spray as neat as you want. Sanding between every coat, as many coats as you want, depending on what kind of finish you want. All right. Well, thank you. <laughs>
Thank you.